Hello and welcome to Hops and Bros. This week, another tremendously awesome episode. Because it's a Craft Beer 101. Long Beep. distance. I know. Can we have like a... For an open window on the Craft Beer world. Max and Chris from Hops and Bros. Welcome to Hops and Bros. Yeah. Alright, so this week we're going to be talking about uh, something that, that's essential in beer. Now, as a lot of you know, probably yeah. most, there's four ingredients in beer. Uh, yeah. There's water. There's uh, malts, there's hops, and there's yeast. Yeah, what about love, Max? What about love? Uh, there's also love and there's also time. But I always like to say there's actually five ingredients in beer because you have to add time. Time yeah. is that factor that is so important in every single step of brewing. But anyways, we'll talk about that at a later time. Because today we're talking about citra, a hop that's been not overused, but we or you are drinking a lot of it without even knowing it. Is it a right way to introduce it? Or it's it's a good way wrong? to say it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to jump right in it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Citra is, is not a naturally occurring hop. Mm -hmm. A lot of hops that we use in brewing today okay. are, they're, they're, they're naturally uh, grown from place to place, but a bigger number, especially when it comes to your uh, citrusy hops, to your overly bittering hops and, and hops that have a specific function, uh, they're usually crossbred, they're usually created. And okay. that's the case with the citra. Uh, hmm. Citra first originated in 1990 uh, and had the name X114, X114. That's really uh, cool. It's, it's very cool. It, 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 very reminiscent of, of Wolverine. <laughs> it's just, I, I love when uh, they put those numbers for hops. I like those names. It looks like they're really experimental hops. And it feels... And they were, especially yeah. for this one. It was one of those experimental hops. Uh, and it actually wasn't used uh, until 2007. So it took a while for it to, hmm. uh, to, became, to, to, to come into mainstream. The first guy to, to use it, actually two guys, two brothers... Uh, of the name of uh, Whit Whitmer, Whitmer Brothers. Whit 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 yeah, that, that's uh, the right way to pronounce it. I, I'm a pronunciation expert, so we pronounce Whit it. Whitmer. Whit Whitmer. Anyway, they're <laughs> Americans, uh, and they were the first to use the Citra in a beer and won a pr win a prize for it. So they won okay. gold, uh, and from there, Sierra Nevada uh, uh. had their first bottle a couple of years after in 2009 okay. uh, with the uh, Tornado. Uh, torpedo IPA. Torpedo. Torpedo yeah. IPA. <laughs> um, I'm glad we have the same sources. I'm glad we have the same source. Oh yeah, we get the same sources for sure. Just terrible with names. No uh, fake news here on Ops and Bros. Craft Beer 101, I guarantee you. Fake <laughs> and, news and before free. we get into the science part of it, to what makes it not an awesome hop, because as you've probably seen, I have not talked a lot about the, 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 the particularities, what it does in beer, that's yeah. going to be Chris. Um, but Ontario used to be a very big uh, hop growing community. Yeah. A lot of hop farms, a lot of, of technology, a lot of, uh, of big breweries were using Ontario as their source. Now, uh, after a couple of years ago, actually many years ago, it kind of fell away. Yeah. Uh, Ontarians stopped growing hops, they started growing different kind of cash crops, and with the years, lost uh, the, the, the techniques to grow hops. So there's a couple different people who are trying to bring this back, such as Niagara College, naturally. I'm a little biased now because oh. I go there. Uh, they have a program where they're, they're yeah, with the, the hop field we have, they're testing out what? every single plant, collecting data. Oh, yeah, we've got a hop field. It's about two acres. It's not super big. Um, and seeing, okay, so in this temperature, will this hop grow better? If I add this kind of water, they're trying to bring the, the knowledge back to Ontario so that hop growers in Ontario have a resource. Uh, that said, if you do grow hops uh, and you want to do commercially or, or something like that, send them to Niagara College. Uh, they, they will be happy to analyze it, let you know what the alpha acids are and what how the hop is going okay. and, and, and if there's something you could do with it more. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say f about that. I just wanted to add. Right. Can you think also, we, do you think we can put a link down below for like if there's hop growers watching that want their hops to be tested? 
Uh, yes, maybe. I'll, uh, sorry, I was looking. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if they want to contact someone and get uh, involved into this process, uh, I, I think it's really interesting because uh, smaller op growers uh, need those resources just to make it out there. It's it's a hard it's a hard crop. It's fun to grow though. We have we have a bunch here at the uh, Upsembros HQ and uh, seriously, really fun plant to grow. But uh, having those resources available, I think it's something amazing. Yeah, I'll try to find a link. I'll, I'll put it down there. And yes, it is an awesome plant. To, 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 to grow because you see it, you see it grow every day. You can oh, yeah. sit, it's you beautiful. can stand right next to it. And if you, you're not careful, it's going to attach itself to you. It's, it's an incredible plant. Yeah. Love that plant and uh, support everyone who wants to grow some. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'll put the link down there uh, with Niagara College. Uh, boop, and boop, boop, boop. for those people who think that I'm lonely here, I'm not because I have a new friend. My, no way. Uh, What's that? It's a, uh, um, uh, fuck, I forget the name, uh, aloe vera, aloe vera Oh, plant. so yeah. if, you get, if you get sunburn, has... you can like spread it around yeah. yourself. Exactly, Chris, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, I figured it, it, the greenhouse is right next to the brewery on campus and I didn't have any plants here. So I'm like, I might as well go get something. And I saw this guy, Henry Henrietta, or this girl, I don't know. I don't want to push anything on it. It can choose what it wants to be. Yeah, um, exactly. So don't, don't, don't push the gender thing on it. Uh, I don't want to push a gender on yeah. it. If it wants to be Henry or Henrietta, it can. Yeah. So Chris, <laughs> Citra, <laughs> what's in it? <laughs> so uh, we're not talking about genders for uh, Citra, but it has probably the same issue as someone that's figuring out what gender it is because it is a flavoring hop with a high acid alpha level. So okay. it is a good bittering hop too, but mostly used as a flavoring agent because it is mostly known for its mango, guava, and a lychee fruit flavors. And also uh, known for being paired with hops like um, Simcoe or Mosaic, which is one of Mac's favorite hop. Um, <laughs> It's awesome. I'm a yeah, big fan. Really nice. And for me, having the opportunity to try out like an IPA like the Vox Populi uh, Mono Blanc Citra is a good way to get introduced to this hop um, because it's massively hot with the Citra, um, which is for me, as Max like Mosaic, one of the good hops that I really do enjoy because it reminiscent, reminiscent uh, is it the right way to say it, of um, Cascade, uh, which is for me a hop that kind of like changed everything. Uh, Citra is the one that kind of like pushed the whole uh, fruity, citrusy hop to another old level. Um, so I really do appreciate the, that characteristic from the Citra. So Citra is range, ranging from uh, 11 to 14% acid alphas uh, with a 3, 4.5% uh, beta on, um, on the acid level of the hop. Um, Ranging on the prices, we're not talking Galaxy Mosaic prices. So Citra has been used a lot, so it's a little bit more easily available for uh, brewers out there. So it's a good hop to start off with a nice little IPA that would not be too expensive to brew. I think that's a good way to just get that nice fruitiness, uh, a little bit of that citrusy complexity, mangoes and all that stuff without paying the big bucks of having, let's say, uh, Lupulin powder or uh, Galaxy or Mosaic on that end. So I think it's a good alternative uh, to use this one as your main flavoring and then adding a little bit of the other ones just to make it a good recipe but also not uh, emptying your pockets at the same time. Yeah, which is very important because uh, the more, and again, I've not, I haven't been here for a while, but the more I see the, the beer industry from the brewer's point of view, uh, you can be as straight as you want. You can you can have a beer and add mostly hops. You can add more hops than, than malts in there if you really wanted to. It'd be kind of yeah. weird, but you could. Yeah, um, you could. Why not? But then it's the price point. Is your customer going to want to buy a $9 IPA? Yes or no? Yeah. You know, and with the Citra being reasonably priced and stable in the price, because that's another thing, hops will vary in stability of pricing, oh, but yeah. also in stability, stability of crop. If you had a bad year, well, you know, it might not yield uh, as much flavor as you would want from yeah. the hop. So it's very important to keep track of those. And the Citra, uh, very popular and still still is very popular and will be for another little while for sure. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to brewing with it. I really am. So it's, we'll see. It's a really nice hop. I really enjoy it. And having this one available pretty much in every single like 
kind of fruity IPA we have out there. It's really fun to, uh, to it finally is pretty talk much about everywhere. It like, yeah, it's it's pretty much everywhere. I've seen it in, in many, many, many beers that we've uh, we've drank throughout the years, uh, and I think we, we we will keep on seeing. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing which is the next one. There's going to be another hop someday. Someone's going to brew something or uh, cross cross pollinate something. But we'll see. Yeah, next XVB A Z slash one two eight four eight. That's probably going to be the next. Really, really cool hop. So keep <laughs> your eyes open for X B V A dash X one fourteen. Eight eight. Eight eight five. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks for watching guys uh, we, <laughs> we'll see you in the next episode oh, if so, you like so awkward. <laughs> if you like the video please leave a link uh, leave a like down there leave a, leave a comment and let us know uh, which is your favorite hop if you yeah. like the citro or if there's another one that you prefer yeah we'll, we'll make it the, cra the next craft beer 101 no problem with that uh, yeah, I think we you, already have a good suggestion for the next one so probably in Two Craft one on ones. Perfect. Yeah, I think Alex sent us something new, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> Alex. Yeah, he's on point, man. We, love we, that we guy. Sending us a bunch of stuff all the time. I love yeah. it. Uh, so, if you want to buy us a beer, but you don't want to go through the hassle of sending us a physical physical beer, you can send us a, a, a metaphorical beer uh, through Patreon. Ooh. So uh, give us five bucks. Let us know which beer you want us to uh, to review, or even which subject you want us to look at, uh, and we'll do our best to find it. Yeah. So link is down there, and uh, and while you're there, subscribe, leave a like, and uh, yeah. thanks a lot for everything. And we see you in the next video. And let's make a ding with the thing, because Max can't really ding it. So.